Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to Upstate Speed Test. Today we got something a little different. We're gonna unbox the TP-Link BE24000 router, also known as the BE900. And this thing is a beast. The box is huge and heavy. I'm not sure the camera does it justice. Currently at my residence, I have a two gigabit symmetrical fiber connection. And my current Netgear equipment, even though it's rated for multi-gig speeds, can't quite get there. Uh, wired and wireless, it seems to be struggling a lot with the speeds that we have. Uh, whereas when I connect directly to the fiber provider's ONT, there's no problems whatsoever. So today, we're gonna unbox the Sky. I'll put in some clips of me setting it up. And of course, we're gonna speed test it and see how we do on the new router. And this thing uh, is huge. I don't know if the video is really gonna do it justice of just how big it is. I'll get into some more details with you guys in a minute. Before we really get started though, give the video a thumbs up, hit subscribe down below, and let's take just a moment to thank our video sponsor, Circled In. Circled In can help you avoid some of the cost of having a wireless plan by joining up with others who already have a wireless plan to help you save money. Today's video is brought to you by Circled In. CircledIn.com makes it super easy to get the benefits and savings that come along with a postpaid or prepaid wireless account without having to set one up yourself. Let's take just a second to see how easy it is to use CircledIn.com and save a ton of money on your wireless. Starting out on the CircledIn.com homepage, I would start by clicking all circles. Once the page loads, you can sort by postpaid or prepaid providers like Verizon, T-Mobile, Google Fi, Simple Mobile, and Metro. If you see a plan that piques your interest or you feel fits you best, you can click join circle, read through more details about the plan, and if you decide to go for it, you can click reserve. Circled In also now supports streaming services like Netflix, Disney, Hulu, HBO Max, and more. CircledIn.com, check them out today. Thank you again for supporting the channel. All right, so this is the BE24000, like I mentioned in the intro. This thing is huge. It's ready for Wi-Fi 7, but it also has four streams. It does two channels of the five gigahertz, one channel of 2.4, and the new uh, Wi-Fi 7 as well. So also, as you can see on the front here, there's a programmable LED uh, display board here that you can make it have like smiley faces or a few letters and an L uh, LCD screen on the bottom that you can swipe through like a smartphone. All those are cool, but not the main reason I bought it. The main reason I bought it was for the performance. You've got up to 24.4 gigabits per second of total throughput. On the six gigahertz band, I remember seeing it can go up to about 11 gigabits per second, and the two five gigahertz networks are capable of six and the 2.4 gigahertz uh, in theory should be a little bit over a gig, but in my opinion, I've never found a 2.4 gigahertz network that I would consider speedy. Uh, looking here on the back, it can support 16 stream quad band Wi-Fi, unlock the full potential of the six gigahertz band with the new uh, 320 megahertz channels and higher capacity, it can connect more devices at the same time. It's uh, ready to be a mesh system if you want it to be, and it can have multiple devices running simultaneously on different networks, which, you know, we already knew that, but on the back of the device, you get four 2.5 gigahertz port, you get a one gigahertz, one gigabit per second LAN port, a 10 gigabit port, and it also, if your provider will allow it, which I don't think mine does, but I'll have to double check, you can connect the fiber directly to the back of the motor, uh, back of the router and skip your provider's ONT. But I did some research online last night and not many providers allow for that. And just overall, it's got a really sleek design, 12 internal antennas. So in theory, that should allow more devices to connect simultaneously with less of a slowdown uh, and less interference as well. But we'll have to see how it works in practice. And uh, it's far reaching. so. Uh, 12 optically positioned antennas, proprietary Wi-Fi optimization and beam forming technology. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with the unboxing because the, the real proof here will be in the pudding. Once I put the montage on of me setting it up, definitely gonna run some speed tests for you guys and see how it goes. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. What I'm planning on doing is keeping the same Wi-Fi network name so that everything will just carry over to the new router, which sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. I hope it works though, because I have so many devices in this house connected to Wi-Fi. 
I don't really want to go through and reprogram them all. So I got my trusty unboxing screwdriver. This time it's not a steak knife. <laughs> and let's see, uh, I don't even think we're going to need this because somebody ripped the packaging already. I don't know if I should consider that a good thing or a bad thing. Kind of a good thing because it's helping me get it open. <clears throat> also a cool thing to note about this was uh, buying it through Amazon. I have an Amazon Prime card. They're doing a 15% back promotion on TP Link devices right now. Uh, so that's pretty cool. I, I hope it worked for me. I'll have to check my statement. Uh, but 15% cash back is pretty good and it was already kind of on sale at the 14% off. Uh, normally a $700 router, although that's uh, probably a little bit of marketing fluff there. Let's see, am I missing something? Oh, okay. So it just slides out. This is a big, big box, guys. So this thing is huge. Very, very nice unboxing experience there. It slid right off. Uh, Wi-Fi like never before, it says. And then the other side says TP-Link. Whoop. Rut row. Am I opening this right? Which way is up? I think this way is up. Ah, oh, there we go. Look at that. The box opens, it kind of opens like a shoe box, sort of. See it like, <laughs> that's cool. All right, so here's the device itself. And uh, take it out of its last little holder there. All right. Ooh, it smells like a factory inside the box. I guess I shouldn't really be too surprised at that. Uh, let's see, what do we got on here? Which way is the back? Okay, the back's over here. Oops, I just hit the microphone. That wasn't good. Sorry about that. Uh, the rest of this packaging, redefining Wi-Fi 7 routers. So you get a user guide in here. I saw an Amazon review that said it came with no paperwork, but I'm guessing the person just didn't open the box far enough. Uh, and then you get your power adapter, power brick, Yep, and a SIM card looking tool here to help you push the reset button if you need to. So that's cool. Let me get all this box out of the way because I think we got just about everything out of the box. I'll take all this stuff out of the way. I'll probably need that later, I'm sure. So let's take the last little bit of wrap off here. I'm not gonna lie, it kind of feels like most of the weight of the box was the box. This thing itself isn't that heavy. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, this thing's got a little bit of weight to it, but most of the weight of the box was the box, which is hilarious. So you take one more little screen. There's a little screen protector on the LCD screen. So I saw online on this thing, you can scroll through like the weather and the performance of the CPU inside and the temperature. And then uh, I'm gonna cover up the labels on the back here. This is where you get the fiber port that you can, you have to buy an adapter, but it does allow you to plug directly into your fiber internet provider if the internet provider allows it. Most internet providers force you to use their ONT from the research I found. And then you got your two 10 gigabit per second ports here and your four 2.5. You get a power on and off button and this is where your power jack goes. And a USB 2.0 and 3.0 on the back as well. <coughs> All right, well, that's pretty much it for the unboxing. Let's, uh, let's go upstairs and I will begin setting this thing up. Let's go. Okay, uh, we're plugged directly into the 10 gig port on the TP-Link and I just wanted to run a quick test to show you guys that I am getting the full symmetrical speeds when plugged directly into the router. Uh, we'll connect to Empire Access dire directly to Green Lights Competition. And there we go. We're shooting right up to the full two gigabits per second. So yeah, uh, I don't know if it's an issue with my Apple products or, or my configuration or what, but the uh, 
Wi-Fi seems to get stuck around seven or 800 down on the Apple products. On the S22 Plus, uh, I have had it break over a gig. So, you know, I don't, I don't know what exactly the issue is, but even on Wi-Fi 6E, the Apple products are coming nowhere close to the 2.1 gigs that we're getting. Uh, and again, the Wi-Fi 6E is rated to go up to about 2,500 megabits per second. Uh, so there, yeah, there you go. And then let's test one more server just for kicks. Uh, we'll do Northland Communications in Syracuse, New York. 11 millisecond ping. And Northland Communications might be a one gig server. I'm only getting 900 on that side and 900 on the up. So yeah, I think... Uh, some of these servers, uh, and this is a perfect example of that, some of these servers only go up to a gig because you're only required to have a gig to be in the server list for speed test. Uh, let's try GoNet Speed in Phelps, New York. 15 millisecond ping and boom, right up to two gigabits per second. So yeah, there you go. Crazy speeds. And it looks like their upload might uh, not be as fast. No, it's getting there. All right. Cool. And next we'll move on to testing out the wireless. It's the next day now. We got the TP-Link all set up and ready to go up there. And uh, no Wi-Fi 7 devices to test with, but we do have a generous smorgasbord of devices to compare and contrast with. So let me put on do not disturb mode real quick before I forget. There we go. And uh, yeah, we'll run them one at a time. We're about maybe five feet or less from the router. So Wi-Fi 7, go into my favorite Pentel data server in Palmerton, Pennsylvania. We're getting about 700 down on Wi-Fi 6E. Now, I'll have to communicate with TP-Link, and I had a very similar problem with my older Netgear device. Um, there's a huge discrepancy between the download and the upload, at least on my Apple products, and it could be because they only are 2x2 MIMO on the um, uh, wireless there. And, of course, somebody's going to call while I'm doing this. Awesome. And uh, let's hit, uh, let's try an older, this is an S22+. Plus. The S22 Plus does seem to uh, generate slightly better results on Wi-Fi than the Apple products. Um, but again, that's, uh, that's like a known thing, right? I I've heard over and over again that Samsung devices tend to perform a little bit better on wireless. Sometimes I see it, sometimes I don't. So there we go. We're getting 1,500 on the upload, but again, only 720 on the download. So if you have any suggestions for me, let me know down in the comments. Here's the iPad Pro with a bigger antenna system running on Wi-Fi 6E. And it looks like we're gonna get a little bit over 700. Uh, well, it was looking like it was gonna go to 700. This one's connected to Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. And about 1200 on the upload. So a wide variety of results over wireless. Now, uh, one more, let's do the fast.com results on all the phones. Actually, I don't know if this one has the uh, so we're getting about 1.3 gigs there. And I'll have, just have to use Chrome. So 1.4 gigs on the iPhone and about one gig on the up. The Samsung is doing much better. One point, well, a little bit better. 1.5 gigabits per second. Very similar ping times. And the upload is approaching 1.2. And then we'll go over to the iPad and do the same. Again, I don't think I have the Fast app on the iPad, so we'll have to just do Chrome. And the iPad is a little bouncy. 1.2, 1.3. So it's weird, the, the fast.com results tend to be a little bit exaggerated, but they seem to be showing more of the uh, speed on the download than the Okla app for some reason. So I'm thinking it's either a glitch in the Okla app or 
something funky with the way the data is routed through green light fiber. Uh, so we got 1.3 on the down, 1.1 on the up on the iPad. And again, sadly, no Wi-Fi 7 devices, although I may be getting a Google Pixel 9 XL in the next couple days, so maybe we'll see a difference there. Uh, let's do one more test a little bit further away from the router. We've moved quite a bit away from the router now. I would say this is about maybe 25 feet, 20, 20 to 30 feet, we'll call it. And uh, we're going to run all the devices again. For this test, I did put them all on the same server, so we'll see if that, uh, we'll see if we can get a little bit more even results. First up is the iPhone 15 Pro Max on Wi-Fi 6E. So we got 591 on the down, and it looks like it's going to finish just under 800, so 781. Now we're doing the S22 Plus on Wi-Fi 6, 19 millisecond ping, so a little higher than the iPhone. <clears throat> but it's getting beat on the download. We've got, we're getting about 700 down. So about 100 megabits per second more than the iPhone. And the upload, again, is at 1,257. So again, I don't understand why there's such an imbalance between the download and the upload. But if you have an idea, let me know down in the comments. And here's the iPad Pro. M4, brand new, 17 millisecond ping. And again, this is on Wi-Fi 6E going to the same server. So 580 on the down and just over a thousand on the up. So there you guys go. There's the Okla comparison. Let's go to fast next. We're gonna rerun it on the iPhone first. So we're getting 1.2 gigabits per second on the down, 1.3, and I guess we can start this one now. <clears throat> so there you go, on the S22 Plus we approached 2 gigabits per second, ended up at 1.5, 760 on the upload, and then we'll go over to the iPad Pro again. And the S22 Plus, we're getting 1.1 gigabits per second on the up. iPad's getting 1.4 on the down. So very interesting, uh, very mixed results. The iPad sometimes will outpace the iPhone and, and vice versa. Very good latency numbers on all the devices. iPad is going to finish, uh, looks like close to a gig on the up. 880 on the up. So all in all, the Okla app seems to not be able to handle the fiber, or again, there could be some weird routing going on between the router and the ONT. I'm not really sure, but nonetheless, <laughs> these are not speeds to complain about. You know, I have a two gigabit symmetrical connection. The fast test is showing that I'm getting close to what I should be, but the Okla test is not. Just for kicks, let's do an Okla test in Chrome, because sometimes I have noticed a difference. We'll move off of the providers thing and we'll do uh, Pentel data. There it is right there. So yeah, sometimes I've noticed a difference running it in a browser as opposed to the app. So it looks like in the browser, the results are gonna be a little bit slower, not surprising. Some, you know, sometimes they see faster, sometimes they don't. Uh, so there we go, about 500 on the down, which is again, not not the speeds I would expect out of a fiber connection. And uh, over a gig on the upload. So yeah, if you guys have ideas why the download speed is so much slower, especially on the Apple products, I'm guessing it might have to do with the fact that the Wi-Fi on the Apple products is 2x2 two two MIMO as opposed to 4x4. Four four. Um, but overall, how does it compare to my old router? I'd say there's a noticeable improvement especially using the fast.com test and plugged in this new router does hit the full two gigs so there you guys go there's a look at uh, two gigabit symmetrical fiber connection on the tp link and uh, if you like the video give it a thumbs up hit subscribe down below and we'll see you guys in the next one